Welcome back to our lecture series, Math 4220, Abstract Algebra 1 for students at Southern Utah University. As usual, I'm your professor today, Dr. Andrew Misseldein. In this lecture, lecture seven, we start chapter three, uh, which in this chapter, we're gonna introduce the most fundamental and most important structure in abstract algebra called the group. And I should mention that in algebra and mathematics in general, but especially in algebra, we're not always the most clever in terms of the things that we name. Um, so I mean, after all, like what's a set, right? A set, if you think of just like English, it, you know, it's just a collection of things. Okay, that makes sense when you think of it from a mathematical setting. But what's a group? Well, a group is a collection of things. Um, we're gonna see other things like that as well. Uh, we're gonna talk about a field, which that might make you think of a, a like a meadow, right? But if you talk about like, oh, all of the all of the experts in my field, a field can also be used as a as a synonym for group. It's a collection of things. Um, also, we'll talk about rings. What's a ring? Well, again, you might think about some shiny thing you want on your finger, but if you think of like a ring of thieves, again, the word ring in some connotations in some context can mean a collection of things. Uh, and so you're gonna see that a lot, uh, a lot when one talks about groups and things. But before we define what a group is, what I wanna first introduce is the idea of a binary operation. Algebra is all about studying operations, binary operations being one of the ones we talk about the most. What is a binary operation? So if we have some set, which we're gonna call a G, uh, thinking of this as a prototype of what a group is gonna be, a binary operation is a set, or is a function, excuse me, from G cross G to G. So basically you take two elements of your set G and then you produce a third element, a binary operation. We're quite accustomed to things like this and we'll define what that means in just a second. Uh, let's say that the binary operation has the name circle. So there's gonna be some symbol to denote the function. Um, oftentimes when we describe the function, you're gonna have here, some element in the domain, a comma b, it's just two elements from the set g. Uh, the image of a, b under this map circle, we often denote it as the following, a circle b. That is, we put the symbol for the operation between the two elements we're acting on. This is similar to how one denotes relations. This is how we denote this. Now, there are also situations where we put no symbol between them whatsoever. This is very common when we do multiplication. So juxtaposition can be used to describe the operation in hand here. So the map circle will map A comma B to the element A circle B. Uh, yeah, so, so we, we see this type of notation all the time. And so we'll often write as a pair G comma the operation. This represents that it is a set with the binary operation of circle. And so in the, in the algebra community, this is often referred to as a magma. Uh, that's not a term you see a whole lot because we don't often focus on that, but it's just a set with a binary operation. And we're actually quite accustomed to many examples of things like this. Take, for example, the sets, the natural numbers, the integers, the rationals, the reals, the complex numbers, for example. These are all um, sets with the binary operation of addition. So addition is an example of a binary operation. If you add together two natural numbers, you get back a natural number. If you add two integers, you get an integer. Uh, if, you get, if you add two rationals, two reals, two complex numbers, you always get back an integer. Uh, not, not an integer, but you always get back a number of that type. Um, I should also mention that multiplication is also an example of a binary operation on this set here. If you take any two natural numbers and multiply them together, you get a natural number. Same thing for integers, same thing for rational, same thing for reals, same thing for complex numbers. This idea of addition and multiplication always gives us binary operations. Uh, this is also true for the set Zn, right? So Zn is the set of integers, it's a set of congruence classes of integers mod n. One can denote the notions of modular addition and uh, modular multiplication. Now, sometimes uh, people draw a circle plus or circle times to denote this, just in terms of LaTeX, uh, you can actually write this backslash O plus and O times, if you wanna do that symbol there. Um, I should also mention that for the standard, if you wanna do this like X symbol in LaTeX, uh, that itself is just gonna be backslash times. I think that's the command off the top of my head. I, I hope that's not wrong, um, but backslash times would do it. 
I myself am not a, don't necessarily feel like I need a symbol to distinguish modular edition from regular edition because by context it'll be clear what we're referring to and that's and that's mostly because I'm an algebraist and therefore that's kind of how I feel about some of these things. So these are all important sets for which addition and multiplication make great binary operations. Some other sets we should mention here, um, if like if you take vector spe vector spaces for example, you take the vector space R n. Uh, this would be the set of all column vectors of the form. You have like an x1, x2, up to xn, right? Where all of the xi's, these are real numbers. So you take this vector space. Uh, in terms of vector addition, right? This is a binary operation, vector addition. Because in vector addition, what you're doing is you're going to take two vectors from Rn, and you combine them together to produce a vector in Rn. And it's just the usual rule that you add components. The first components get added together, the second components get added together, the third components get added together, et cetera, et cetera. Now, as a non-example, uh, we can mention something like scalar multiplication. Um, if you take scalar multiplication of vectors, I should mention that this is not a binary operation. And why is that? Scalar multiplication, what you do is you're gonna take a scalar r, and you're gonna combine that with some vector rn to produce a vector in rn. And so notice here, we don't call this a binary operation because one of, you know, one of the operands is not actually an element of a set. r and rn are gonna be different sets. These are not the same type of object. This isn't like an integer plus an integer. This would be like an integer plus a matrix, right? Or something like that. This takes two different objects and combines it to create a, a, a vector, right? This is not an example of a binary operation. Uh, so this is not this is not an oper a binary operation. Um, these type of objects are of importance to, of course, um, algebra. This is why we care about scalar multiplication here. It's not a binary operation, uh, but you know this is something we'll talk about this maybe. Well, probably in the, actually in, in forty two thirty, I think uh, this is a type of thing we could call an action. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's a ring action of some kind. But again, that's not something we need to get into right now. Focus on, on binary operations. Scalar multiplication is not a binary operation. Uh, and so other operations we do see in um, linear algebra probably don't fall under binary operations. If you think of like the dot product, for example, uh, the dot product, same type of idea, the dot product, as it's usually defined, it's gonna be a map from Rn times Rn, but then it produces something in R when you're done, right? So you take two things that belong to the vector space, combine them, but then you get a scalar when you're done. So again, this is another example, a non-example of a binary operation. Uh, this will be something you call like a bilinear form in a linear algebra, but it's not a binary operation. Binary operation requires that all three sets in consideration are one and the same thing. You take two elements from a set, combine them together to produce a third element of that same set. Uh, things like scalar multiplication, dot product kind of uh, leave that setting. Uh, on the other hand, if you take, for example, the set, uh, if you look at R3, R3, you actually could use the cross product. Uh, that's something that you often see in linear algebra. The cross product is an example of a binary operation because you take a vector in R3, you combine it with another vector in R3, and that produces a vector in R3. So that gives us, that does give us a binary operation. That's kind of special to R3. All right, uh, some other operations I want to mention. Let's take like matrix multiplication without leaving, without leaving linear algebra first yet. If you take the set M sub N of R, uh, sometimes people denote this as like R to the N cross N. This right here is going to be the set, the set of N by N matrices matrices with real entries. Um, you can have a binary operation with respect to addition, right? So matrix addition, uh, that's of course going to be an operation, a binary operation. Now that uh, that's gonna be true for any sort of n by m matrix, nothing particularly special about that. Uh, I, I mostly wanna focus on matrix multiplication for a moment right? We could talk about the product of any two matrices, right? So if you take a matrix A times B, how that gives you another matrix. And so matrix multiplication can 
m times n times r cross m n r. This will then produce an m by n matrix. So if you take square matrices and multiply them together, that gives you an example of a binary operation. Now, one has to be sort of careful uh, because matrix multiplication is defined for other shapes of matrices like you can take you can take for example a three by two matrix times a two by three matrix uh, and that does produce for example a three by three matrix so there are ways of defining matrix products in some situations but the problem for the problem about matrix multiplication in general is if you take like a three by two matrix you want to times that by a four by seven matrix that's a no-go uh, there's no such matrix like that. And so the issue kind of there with matrix multiplication in general is that not every possible product is defined uh, on the set, right? If you look at, if you want like this, the, the set of all matrices times all matrices, you want to produce a matrix without any restriction on the dimensions of the matrix. Well, the problem is there's going to be some order pairs for which it's not defined. So it's not even a function at that stage. And so these are some, these are some important counterexamples you should mention about binary operations. So like we saw with scalar multiplication, it could be that one of the operands is from a different set, so that doesn't make it an operation. It could be that the resultant is actually not part of the set, and therefore it's not a binary operation. Or another common thing that one talks about is that it could be that, you, yes, you, you have some type of way of combining two elements together from the same set to get a third element, but not every possible combination is defined. Uh, this kind of leads to, and like we talked about like with bilinear forms, scalar multiplications, a group action. Uh, this kind of leads to the idea of a groupoid, uh, which these are all like generalizations of the notion of a group, which we're gonna try to talk about. And you don't have to worry about all these generalizations in this course, but there is relevant algebraic stuff going on there. But I should mention that as defined, these things are not binary operations. And one other example I do wanna point out uh, matrix multiplication actually is just a special case of function composition uh, because matrices can be associated to linear transformations for which the matrix multiplication is just the composition of the two functions. Um, and so when you have something like, re recall that the set B to the A, this is the set of all functions of the form F, all functions that go from A to B like so. We can define an operation, right? We can compose functions together uh, you know, we'll have things like maybe, you know, F is a function from A to B and G is a function from B to C. Then it makes sense to compose the two functions, G, um, G of F, which would be an element of C to the A. We can compose these things together. It kind of gets in the same problem that uh, matrix multiplication does. Not every possible composite of two functions is well defined. Uh, but in the special case, like in the n by n case, if we take this case of x to the x, right? So this would be the set of all functions f of the form x to x. These are functions which map back the same set back into itself. In this situation, we now do have a binary operation. Uh, in this setting, right? In this setting composition, basically only in this setting, of course. Composition in this situation is in fact a binary operation. So you have to make sure that, binary operation, that the two operands and the resultant all belong to the same set and every possible pairing of operands gives you a well-defined resultant. That's what we need to be a binary operation.